Well, let's bring in um, a guy who was there at the beginning when Derek got called up in 95 and was a teammate of Derek's for four of the five championships. And that's my colleague on the Yes Network, Paul O'Neill. Paul, how you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm all right. What's up? Not much. Uh, are you surprised that Derek would announce his retirement before the season even begins? Uh, I guess a little bit. I, I don't know, though. I mean, from what's going on in the past couple of years, you know, here we go again. You know, it was Mariano and Andy Pettit last year. But, you know, he's probably had to answer these questions and probably figured out that it's probably the best, uh, that he gets it out of the way so people don't have to talk about it. And, um you know, it's uh, this is a big spring training for him. He needs to get healthy and go into the season, uh, you know, ready to go. If it ends up going the way it went with Mo, where he gets gifts every stadium he goes and plays in for the last time, and he's constantly honored around Major League Baseball, do you think he'd be comfortable with that? Well, I think it'll it'll probably happen, uh, no doubt. Um, you know, the the interesting thing about Mariano is is you know it's his last year. Everybody knew it, but he was still so good. I mean, he mm. was still the Mariano that, you know, you remember it, and you just hope that Derek gets back to the point where, um, you know, he, he's, he's capable of going out there and being part of this team and helping them win. You, you hope it's a good enough year where he can enjoy it. Now, you know, we had Gene Michael on. He said nobody could ever predict a Hall of Fame career. You were there with the Yankees in 95 when Derek got called up when Tony Fernandez got injured. Did you see something special in him, Paul, or did this all take you by surprise in retrospect? Well, I don't know that it took me by surprise, and I do agree that you can't just say, hey, this guy's going to be a future Hall of Famer because so many things come into play. Uh, you know, what kind of teams you play on. You, are you lucky enough to play as long as he did without any major injuries? But there was something special about it. I mean, uh, obviously in 96 when he starts the season the way he did in Cleveland, uh, you, you, you see that, you know, he didn't back down. He, he had the guts to go out and play, and he was extremely confident in uh, – what he was able to do on the field. And that's uh, the one thing that, that always stuck in my mind. And I've said it numerous times. There, I mean, there's certain days when you're out on a baseball field, when you're 0 for 4, 0 for 5, that you just, you know, I'll get them tomorrow. And Derek Jeter, I swear, would want to get that sixth at bat because he knew he was going to get a hit. And that's it's easy to say that everybody's like that, but, but everybody isn't. Paul, he's been called one of the great leaders uh, in the history of the Yankees and in baseball in New York, what made him a great leader? Was there a moment where you can give us an example of of his leadership as a ball player? Well, I think he led by example. Obviously, I think that the one huge play that people remember is, is in Oakland in the mm-hmm. playoffs when we were down that backup play where we, you know, we threw out um, at the plate there, you know, kind of that flip play, but. You know, he played with a lot of people. He, he he grew up, and you know, he became the face of the New York Yankees in the, those championship year, uh, those years. And you know, when you're associated with uh, World Series teams, not only you know in baseball, but in New York, and you're on the magazine covers, and you know, your 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 fans adore you. I mean, let's face it, there's a whole generation of kids that are wearing number two because Derek Jeter was the guy that they looked at as being the shortstop for the New York Yankees during that time where we were winning World Series. I'll tell you what, Paul, I'm thinking about it, and obviously this is the last of the core four, and this is really your last connection with the team with an active player. And you know, and you said there's a whole generation of fans here that only know Derek. I mean, he's going to be in his 20th year this year. This is kind of a, um, you know, you want to celebrate his career, but it's also a little bit sad, too, that it's the passing of an era. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, this is finally that time, and there. Don't get me wrong. I think that the you know the Yankees have moved on. There's no doubt about it. But you're always trying to hold on to what you had in those great years because you still have some of the players. And now, with Derek, you know, retiring, you can close the book on that, uh, and it'll probably even make it more special because there'll be nothing out on the field to remind people of that era, other than you know the clips and. Uh, us talking about it on television, Michael. Now, it, it's hard for us to get into his head, but you knew him well. Could you see his mind changing? Could you see a season this year where he would say, you know what, I retract it, I'm going to give it another try? Uh, you know, I don't think it's an impossibility, but I, I think that sometimes you do start second-guessing your body. I mean, yeah. I don't think that last year was enjoyable for him at all, and he wasn't used to it, and you just – you know, I think he has enough pride to to realize, uh, you know, I'm not like I was when I'm 25 years old. Am I able to come out and play? I mean, when you when you think of Derek, he's got to be healthy in spring training. He's got to figure out, you know, his role on the team this year. And that, I mean, when have you ever said that before? I mean, he's not going to play 
you know, six or seven days a week at shortstop this year. So there will be some differences, but just him being part of this team is always a comforting thing for everybody. 